Is the microphone good like this? I have no audible feedback, so it should be good. All right. So welcome, everybody. Uh, today I'll be talking about the RTM Locker, which is uh, created by the RTM gang. And uh, as of this far, I've only seen a few mentions on Twitter about the group itself and some of the stuff they've done. Uh, last year, there was a talk here at BotConf as well about the same gang, but not about their ransomware sample. And in this case, uh, a source tipped me with a sample, and that was fun to analyze, contained some interesting parts, and I'm here to share that with you. So first of all, a slight bit about me. Uh, my name is Max Kirste, go by the nickname of Libra, and I'm a malware analyst and reverse engineer for Trellix, or in the Advanced Research Center. Uh, we publish reports such as this. There will be a blog on this on the corporate website as well somewhere, uh, either this week or early next week. Uh, we also publish tools such as an automated unpacker for .NET malware, uh, which is called .dumper. And in my spare time, I do write some blogs about the same topics as well. So I want to give a shout out and thank you to the user not a bot, uh, which is the same name as the Twitter handle, if memory serves me well. Uh, I'll be publish the slides later on as well, so clickable links should be uh, easy to find. And in here, uh, the title says Lifting RTM's Veil, which is, they're not too known, and uh, they strive not to be known, which was part of the reason for me to submit it to a conference. Um, and let's see what happens if we do put them in the spotlight and make them known. So they have a nice login page for the panel uh, for affiliates with a username and password and a CAPTCHA. Uh, so probably against brute forcing as normal people use this as well. And once inside the panel, uh, I have to credit all screenshots are from the mentioned source. Uh, once you're in the panel, you can add a victim. So let's say you found a company and you intruded it, you bought access or whatever malicious action you've done. Uh, you can put in the name of the target. You have the ID, so you get per build that you generate on the panel, you get an ID. Uh, the revenue offset company, contact data and a description. Uh, but note that they don't publish their victims, right? So the whole goal they have is to stay out of the spotlight and therefore we can only guess as to what they use this for. Uh, one assumption we have is that the operator is using this to check affiliates. And checking the affiliates is required if you have rules and there are rules for this group. Very strict ones actually. So first off, the text on the screenshot is slightly hard to read on the Beamer but the bullet points highlight the major parts. No targets within the CS region uh, under any circumstance. Well, this is not unique for malware, but uh, it might give us a clue as to potentially where the actors are located, uh, though it's not definitive proof. Now, their goal is, as I said before, to stay out of the spotlight. They want to avoid attacking companies that get you in the spotlight. So they're not looking for your AAA brands or some government uh, sections that they want to extort and leak data of. In fact, we have no uh, evidence that they do double extortion. So we only think that they do the ransomware and try to make money that way. And as long as you stay out of the spotlight, you don't get targeted by law enforcement and li uh, less likely to be targeted by researchers. And therefore, uh, you can well casually make your criminal money um, and walk away with it. Now, they do also adhere to some moral rules. They don't want to attack hospitals, uh, but there is some doubt in that as well as to hitting hospitals generally causes you to hit the news, and they don't want to hit the news. So the question is, is this purely because of the laying low strategy, or is this because of the fact that they are morally against targeting hospitals, or both? We don't know. And affiliates need to be active as well. Inactivity will result in a ban. So researchers trying to enter in here uh, will need to somehow remain active if they want to be in the panel uh, or just assume that one-time access is sufficient. Now, moving on to the technical analysis. Uh, I've made a nice flowchart. My graphical skills are luckily uh, at least readable unlike my handwriting. But the first goal here is to elevate privilege. 
uh, and then it will initialize the debug console, which is optionally, could be turned off, could be turned on. Um, it will shut down selected processes and services. It will empty the recycle bin, delete shadow copies, and so forth. Now, this is a brief look ahead as to what the next part of the presentation will like. So the privilege escalation is nothing too fancy. It's not as if they're looking for a CV or exploiting a vulnerability. What they're simply doing is constantly nagging the user with the UAC uh, dialog, simply running the same process again as admin. So they'll continue to do that uh, until you press continue. Cases where, let's say you're in a corporate environment and you're not able to run something with administrative privileges, assuming the corporate environment is set up like that, um, that will actually mean that uh, the malware hasn't, it hasn't taken this into account. It just tries it again and again and again. So if you press cancel, the next pop-up will come and again and again. Once it has the administrative privileges, which is a must for the malware, uh, which allows us to assume that the operators will take control of the systems prior to running it, uh, meaning that they're not sending this out in a spam campaign uh, in a massive wave, which would also tie in with their modus operandi of laying low, don't get in the spotlight. If you only use this uh, ransomware once you're already in a system, chances of the ransomware getting detected is much lower, obviously. Now, the debug console is uh, probably to help them, and if you pass the dash debug flag, then uh, you get a nice message during the runtime as to what it does and uh, what help there is. As you'll notice in the uh, GDRA screenshots, um, there's no obfuscation in this binary, other than some decompiled code which doesn't necessarily look exactly like source code, but that's about it. And then we move over to the environmental awareness. I uh, thought it was a, a nice play on words. Where it iterates overall running processes and then it has a list internally of processes that it deems to not uh, run, as in it will actually terminate those processes once encountered. Now, uh, this is pretty common as well, but their list is relatively extensive uh, for some of the malware, and most of the files are, or processes are simply terminated because of the fact that they want to make uh, more impact on the victimized system. If Excel or WinWord or any of these processes is open, that means that any of your documents that you have open is in use. If you close the processes, documents are not in use and can be overwritten during the encryption phase. So, uh, maximizing damage in this case. Not only do they do this for the processes, they, only do this. they also do this for the services. Uh, they iterate over a specific list and this is actually one of the things we'll see more often in the code. They iterate over it backwards. So for those with keen eyes in the while loop on top, uh, it will say plus minus one, which is GDR kindly telling us that it is a negative value rather than uh, the weird notation. And it will simply stop all the selected services. Now, the same can be said here. You can see S uh, SQL, for example, which will probably stop your SQL-related service. Uh, and thereby free up the database, maximizing impact. But in this case, you also have more, right? We can see Sophos, uh, which is an AV company, uh, whose service is to be terminated. So apparently they had uh, either trouble with Sophos or just uh, personal feelings. Next, they will take out the trash for you. Uh, it very kindly empties, empties the recycle bin and it does this without a confirmation or progress UI, nor a sound, uh, which you can kindly specify in the Win API. Uh, so without notice, your recycle bin will be empty. Uh, this is not so much as a um, ransom case. It will just delete your files. Uh, and then it will remove all your shadow copies to avoid the uh, restoration of those shadow copies in case of an infection. Then, <laughs> they have some more curious parts. Uh, they'll iterate over all drives uh, that are attached, and uh, they do that in a QWERTY order. So if you go over your keyboard and you use a normal QWERTY, you go from left to right, from top to bottom, to iterate over everything. And they'll save each unused drive letter for later use. Um, 
because what they're going to do next is they're going to mount all volumes. So usually you have your C drive uh, on Windows where you have your operating system, etc. Maybe you have a D drive, maybe you have some network drives if you're in a corporate environment. But in here, anything that is not, mo uh, not mounted will be mounted. And each mount will get a nice drive letter, uh, which they do with the ones that aren't used yet. As such, uh, it will try to harvest potential areas as to what can be encrypted furthermore, uh, and then encrypt this. Uh, but do know that in here, the iteration is backwards again. So uh, your first drive letter will be speaking here, uh, the M, uh, if not already taken. So on my VM, that was the drive M that is created. They also kindly help you uh, handle remote drives, uh, so not the ones physically attached to your machine, but remote ones, and they make sure that uh, this is handled correctly so that their encryption services are uh, smoothly uh, provided without errors, and it will then parse your folders and encrypt your files. Now, during the file traversal, there are some checks as well, so more sanity checks. Um, excluded folders and file names are uh, included in the binary to avoid uh, crippling the machine, so they make sure the machine still works. So for example, the Windows folder is excluded from targeting and any subfolder therein. Um, and the file extension itself is uh, including a dot 65 characters, which is one of the checks you can see in the code at the length at the bottom. Um, it's pretty unique to have such a long file extension, and since it's random data, your files will have random extensions meaning that for each run, but also for each file, you have a lot of different characters, unlike some of the other ransomware, uh, such as the Royal ransomware, which uses the aptly named dot .royal as an extension. Uh, in here, they don't really focus on that, uh, which could be part of their technique to also say, we want to stay out of the spotlight, we want to lay low. Now, the excluded folder names uh, are shown here. They'll make sure that some tools are still working and that you can access your system to pay their ransom uh, to them later on. But obviously they want to uh, not make it too easy for you. Now as I said before, the random data that is generated uh, for the extension is 64 characters, 65 including the dot. Uh, but they do this by generating a random buffer of 32 bytes uh, using the unofficial system function uh, 36, which is also known as RTL Gen Random. This function is there just for you to generate random data. Uh, and each byte is two characters in size, so you have 0, 1, for example, as one byte. Uh, but these become two characters in the conversion process later on when they convert the bytes into characters. So 32 bytes become 64 characters. Now, they were in a, they are in a hurry to encrypt your machine because the sooner it's done, the sooner their uh, goal is accomplished. And in here they use multi-threaded encryption, uh, but they also use uh, IOCTL completion ports. And they connect these two where the, I see a, a few people in the audience looking very confused, um, as was I when I was doing this because there's no need for this whole extra layer of uh, fakeness. Um, so they create some threads, they map them to the ports, and then for each file, uh, they then discover that qualifies according to all of the checks that they've done before, the file names, the folder names, uh, you name it. They'll make sure that it's mapped, and then the IO completion port has a function which actually handles your file, but even that is split up in several parts. So you need to open the file with the uh, overlap flag in order to make this work and they're only targeting files larger than 512 bytes in size. Now, you have custom structure that they're using internally with uh, what I call an action key, and this action key is either of three values. It's hexadecimal uh, A1, A2, or A3, and based on this uh, action key, a specific action is performed. Now, uh, first, you handle the file, uh, meaning you read it, then uh, you write your encrypted data to that file, uh, which is step two. 
And then step three is you rename the file. And by renaming it, you uh, make sure that you put the new extension in, which is part of the rename. And each of the action keys, well, the first two, they actually set the next action key. So they have a, a loop where they first start with, well, uh, if it's OX uh, A1, I'm going to do this. And then they set the next action key, uh, as you can see in the second line in the screenshot. Um, then they end the loop, they repeat it again, and they check again, oh, now my key is A2. I'm going to move over and do step two. And then they're going to do step three. And since step three is the last one, there is no step four. There's no need to uh, up the number again. They just complete it uh, and move on to the next file. Now, in case you had a wallpaper that you had no backup of and you lost the file, don't run this. Also, don't run it for other reasons, obviously. But uh, what it will do is it will change the wallpaper once it's done with the encryption. So once everything is handled and everything is, is uh, ready to uh, wait, essentially, before you pay the ransom or restore your backups. Um, what it will do is we'll change the wallpaper. And uh, that looks like this, with a nice mask next to it, a warning with a lot of exclamation marks. And um, you have 48 hours to contact them. They do drop some ransom notes in folders, so you should have a way to communicate with them. And uh, they only want to make this known to you, other than your very slow machine during the encryption, uh, once they're done, because otherwise you might pull the plug and save half your files. So the encryption is first finished, then they change the wallpaper uh, to maximize their impact again. Now, the encryption threads uh, are based on the number of logical cores, based on the system info that it obtained earlier. And for each thread that finishes, uh, it's deducted by one. So. Um, this check is simply to await while the encryption goes on. And if your number of processes is not zero, it's going to sleep. And uh, if it is zero, that means that all of the encryption threads have finished. And therefore, uh, it's time to move on. So once this function returns, we are going to clear the event logs, uh, because we don't want to leave any traces uh, in this case. And we can see the log names that they clear. They open them, clear them, and very straightforward, just straight up delete them. And uh, there's not too, uh, too much to be added here. As a last part, and this again is in line with the modus operandi that they have, they want to lay low. They don't want their samples to be found. Uh, their name is in the ransom note, so it could leak or spread, if you will, like that. Uh, but they'll try and remove the sample um, the ransomware sample from the disk. And the way that they do this is by creating a race condition. So they're starting a command prompt uh, where they first issue five pings to the local host. And afterward, they pipe that actually into uh, nothing. So there's no output. And what you also see is that if this completes, which it will because local host is always reachable, uh, they'll delete their own file uh, from disk. And directly after this, the malware will shut down. So the time it takes for those five pings is longer than it takes the malware to shut down, meaning that the command prompt is still running in the background with the pings. The malware is not on anymore. By the time the pings finish, you can simply delete the file because it's not in use anymore. Because if you just try to delete your own process, you are doing that to yourself, thereby still running. And since your process is still running, it cannot be deleted because it's currently running. It gives you a nice circle. Uh, so to avoid that circle and break it, uh, they uh, use this race condition that they uh, induce here. Remove the sample. Your files are now encrypted. And you should restore a backup and or contact incident response people in that case. Uh, hopefully, that doesn't happen. Uh, the sample itself uh, was and is not public. If I find some time tonight, I'll do that. Otherwise, I'll do that tomorrow morning. I'll upload it to various sharing sites, uh, including non-premium ones, so that everybody has access to the sample itself. Um, as I said, there will also be a blog going live with detailed information uh, that is also in this talk for later reading, um, if you so desire. 
then that leaves time for Q&A. Uh, if you have any questions, then now is the time to ask. If something pops in your mind, which usually is the case for me, uh, you wake up tomorrow morning and you're like, this is what I wanted to ask, feel free to reach out on any of these. Uh, or if you see me at the conference, just say, hi, uh, I'm here. So. Okay, I have a first question. Thank you for the tool. Great analysis. Uh, I like the beautifying of the code in Ghidra and so on. Uh, what about anti-debugging techniques? Or did you find something special because you covered the aspect of the ransomware in itself, but about the protection against what you did? Anti-debugging technique, what was no. it? Was it packed or? No, nothing. Nothing. So this is, uh, this is the sample. Um, there's nothing else in it. I, and this is just an assumption, right? I, I don't have facts on this. Uh, if you already own the complete infrastructure and uh, you've become domain admin and you can just do what you want on the system, let's say you turned off the AV as well, you can just push this via group policy and run it on all machines. <coughs> That's it, really. Uh, afterwards, the file is deleted. So they could add it, but I think based on the way I assume they operate, there's no need for this. Hi, nice presentation. I've got a couple of questions, so let's see uh, how we will get. Uh, what's the prevalence of this sample based on your telemetry? And is it mostly targeting consumer segment, enterprise? Uh, they have been successful in laying low. We have no information. Okay, uh, next one. Uh, about the encryption schema. Do you see any glitches in it? Uh, any chances for decryption for free? So uh, I think decryption is often only shared in back channels, uh, if possible. But having said that, I am not great uh, in encryption in general. So I left it as encrypted in my analysis, also in the blog. Uh, I tried it in my local machine. The files do get encrypted. If it's recoverable and what kind of specific scheme is used, uh, how do I put this best? It's left as an exercise for the reader. Uh, I don't know, if somebody here is really into cryptography, the file will be available soon, so uh, yeah, go for it. Okay, thank you. Last question over there, okay. Do you know, on average, what they charge as far as ransoms go, and do you know where they recruit affiliates? Uh, with regards to the underground information as to how they recruit, uh, I have no information. I was approached by the uh, Twitter user that I linked, who shared some screenshots with me in the samples, uh, along with some, let's say, additional information so that I know it's not made up or some fairy tale story that somebody produced. Uh, so I'm, I'm confident of the of the data, but I, I don't know how they do the recruitment. Uh, there is a recruitment post that uh, was shared, uh, but I'm not sure on which forum that was. Uh, but I think there are a lot of people here who are fo following those uh, forums. So I think if you ask around a bit, then uh, people will know. And I think if you search for RTM or RTM Locker on Twitter, you'll find the advertisement post. Um, so that should probably give you enough information to, uh, to take it from there. And your first question was? How much do they charge for ransoms? Ah, how much do they charge for ransoms? Um, don't know on top of my head if that's in the note. Uh, and if it's not on the note, then I don't know. Then it's probably up to the negotiations or, I don't know, the weather outside, the temperature, and some other random variables, what they base it on. Okay. But Okay. Thank you. Thank you.